Rabies Vaccine for Dogs This presentation discusses the importance of keeping your dog vaccinated against rabies, rabies vaccine reactions and the use of rabies titers. The following presentation was based in the writings of Casey Blizzard, a certified veterinary technician at River City Veterinary Hospital in Meridian, Idaho. Rabies vaccines are killed vaccines, which means that the strain of rabies virus used in the vaccine has been inactivated and cannot cause disease. The body's immune response to the vaccine is antibody production. Should the dog later be exposed to the virus, these antibodies will quickly recognize and bind to the virus before it can replicate enough to cause clinical signs. Whether a veterinary technician can administer rabies vaccines to animals depends on individual state regulations. The Veterinary Practice Act in your state will indicate which member of the veterinary team is allowed to administer the rabies vaccine. For example, some states allow a credentialed veterinary technician to legally administer rabies vaccines under the direct supervision of a veterinarian. Direct supervision is defined as having the veterinarian on the premises and easily available. Some states, however, require that only a licensed veterinarian can perform the vaccination. The rabies vaccine can be given subcutaneously or intramuscularly depending on the species. Although this video presentation focuses on dogs, it is worth mentioning that the vaccination site for cats is important because rabies vaccination can lead to sarcoma formation. For the American Veterinary Medical Association vaccine guidelines, the rabies vaccine should be given as distally as possible in the right rear leg of cats, so that should a tumor form, it can be removed by limb amputation. Timing of the first rabies vaccination depends on state and city guidelines, hospital policy, and species. For dogs, it is typically first administered to puppies 12 to 16 weeks of age and then repeated in one year. Some rabies vaccines are approved for subsequent one-year use and some for three years use. However, regardless of the dog or labeled vaccine duration, the first two vaccinations must be one year apart. It is important to be aware of hospital policies, local ordinances, and vaccine manufacturer labels to determine an appropriate rabies vaccine schedule for dogs in your area. Allergic reactions to rabies vaccines fall into two categories, local and systemic, and can range from mild to severe. Local site reactions cause redness, swelling, pain, and inflammation in the area of injection. These reactions are managed with rest, antihistamines, pain medications, ice packs, monitoring and possibly benign neglect. Systemic reactions, less common than local reactions, can be life-threatening. Patients may experience facial swelling, vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. In some cases, the reaction may escalate to full anaphylaxis. The treatment of systemic reactions includes the use of antihistamines, steroids, fluid therapy, pain management and in-hospital monitoring. The attending veterinarian will decide if the dog is able to receive a rabies vaccine again in the future. To prevent additional vaccine reactions, the veterinarian may choose to administer antihistamines as pretreatment to patients that have previously experienced systemic reaction. All vaccine reactions should be reported to the vaccine manufacturer and to the state veterinary board. Vaccine reaction tracking is crucial for identifying possible contamination, bad batches, and for protecting future patients. Titer testing measures the body's level of antibodies against a specific pathogen, in this case, the rabies virus. Titer testing is useful for dogs that can no longer receive the vaccine because of a reaction, for those whose owners request it, and for those traveling to another state or countries that require it. Titers can also be used to determine which dog may not need boosters as well as those that may need boosters more often than every three years. However, Substitution of titers for boosters is not included in most state or municipality laws. In addition, the rabies titer that is considered protective has not been definitely established. For a disease with as much public health importance as rabies, using an accredited laboratory for titer testing is crucial. For more information about the rabies vaccine for dogs please contact your local animal hospital.